Shalom, who praises to you, our Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakar Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well, and Shalom to the whole full elect. This is a video going into the um, the parable. This parable in Matthew, the 22nd chapter. I'm going to jump straight into it. And Yahweh Shai answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And sent for his forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the the wedding, and they would not come. All right. So the king is Yahweh. You know, um, the marriage for his son, the woman being Israel, and the son being Yahweh Shai. All right, the elect of Israel, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, the servants being sent forth for the prophets, all right? Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. All right, that's the table. You know, Proverbs 9, 9 chapter goes into that. All right, with, about wisdom making a table ready. All right. Uh, but they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm another to his merchandise and the remnant took his servants and treated them sp spitefully and slew them and as to Jerusalem old Jerusalem Jerusalem the they, they that killed the prophets that's what they do man all right they killed the prophets but when the James in the book of Acts for example you know that's an example you know in the time of Acts but when the king heard thereof he was rough and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. And said and said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. And that's the same, you know, you had in 2000, everyone thought, you know, a lot of people that were in the old school, you know, I weren't there. Um, This is information that was relayed to me from the, the apostles of Great Millstone, which I believe, you know, their word, because they, they brought... You know, they they haven't um come short of anything they taught me prior to that so they're men of, of good merit okay on that's and their actions show that it speaks for itself in comparison to the, the men that they, that, 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 that that they've been um that were there as well and the things that they speak all right so it says um go ye yeah, in the year 2000, a lot of people fell out because they weren't worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And that's why you have um, a thing known as um, clean, um, house cleaning, man, because every so often, really even now, there's never a moment that it's not being done. The, the spirit is trying the men that are in the faith to find those that are good and worthy, um, they're being refined, but those that are bad are basically being burnt up and cast, cast away because they're not meant to be in the midst of the wedding. And the wedding was furnished with the guests and then the king came in to see his guests. He saw there a man which had not on a, a, a wedding garment and said unto him, friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to his servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into our darkness. darkness. There, shall, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. So you got people that are in the faith right now. They they might be going to camp. They might be there in the midst, but they ain't right, man. All right. And the Lord's going to make it known in the time of Jacob's trouble. Basically, that's going to be our covering. That's our clothing. This wisdom, knowledge and understanding that we, we know. A, a a good example of that is, you know, maybe you might... I remember I heard this point from another brother, which I can't um, quote at this time, but it's something that stayed in my mind as, as a good allegory to show you how great the wisdom is. You could be out in the wilderness and um, you could basically be starving for food, circling and whatnot, the forest or whatever, whatever form of... Take forest, for example, and... Um, there's no food to be found. But then you might see some beetles, you know, beetles in there that, you know, you see it all the time. And for however many amount of period that, you know, before this man withers and dies, 
He's seen the beetles, but he don't know that in the scriptures, in the law, you're allowed to eat beetles. All right. And you basically pass away because of your lack of understanding of the word. That's how this word is. There's things in it. If you don't understand the words that's been prophesied onto us, you could wind up, you know, having a shoot for this faith due to the fact that you didn't put in the time needed to, to implement this wisdom as your understanding and then you get caught out there naked without your wedding garment, all right? So because the Lord is coming to, to make a marriage, all right? And the gar the wedding garment is his wisdom knowledge and understanding. So I'm gonna go to um second Ezra's uh two and thirty-seven. Right, and it reads Second Ezra two and thirty seven. Oh receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that have led you to the heavenly kingdom. Arise up and stand, behold the number of those that are that be sealed to the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received the glorious garments of the Lord. Okay, which is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Take thy number, O Zion, and sharp those that are of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of the children who the, um, thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. And this this is the feast, all right? When the Lord comes back, and this, you know, they today they call it, um, what they call it, man, when you have a crowning ceremony, um, begins with a C, man. Um, I really can't remember right now, Satan, man. But basically, this is going to be a great feast unto the Lord when we come, when the Lord comes, and Lord willing, we get, you know, sanctified, and saved by, by, you know, by being saved by Yahweh Bar Shem El Shai, and being, you know, implemented as a foundation of the nation of Israel, okay? That's what we're really hoping and praying for, okay? So, um, yeah, with that, man, this is a quick video. You know, actually, I'll read on. It says, I as you saw upon Mount Sinai the great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. And as a coronation, that's where it is, coronation. All right. And as more, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said, to me, these be they that are put of the mortal clothing and have been put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palms. They said, then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, it is the son of Yahweh whom they have confessed in the world. Then begin I began I greatly to commend them as for the that they stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. And that's what we do, man. We go out on the highways and byways and we stand stiffly against all of the, the, the fuckery in this world, man. All right? And we stand stiffly against it. We ain't down with this world in no shape or form. All right? Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell the people what manner of things and how great wonders the Lord thy power thou has seen. Okay? Because the Lord is going to magnify us in that day, man. All right. Uh, this is Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Least he walk naked and they see his shame. All right. So we, what do we have to do? We have to keep the garments of Yahweh, Bar Shem, El Shai, upon our clothed, be, you know, gird up our loins as a man. All right. So we need to be girded with this, this cloth over us. In order for us to not be found in a shameful state when the Lord makes his appearing upon the earth. Okay? Because this is this truth is what's gonna keep us from that day, man, of of evil. And allow us to be um participate in the marriage of the Lord. Okay, so I'm gonna finish on this scripture in Revelations.
Okay. Okay, this is Revelation 19 and 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. Okay, that being the nation of Israel. The Lamb being Yahweh Shai, the, uh, the wife being the nation of Israel. Because in Jeremiah, it tell, I believe it's Jeremiah 12 and 7. Um, it tells you how Israel is a woman. And basically... No, 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 uh, 11. Okay. Basically, Israel is a woman that um, is being married upon unto the Lord, all right? So, um, let me just quickly find a scripture. Actually, it's six, six and um, six and two. Uh, Jeremiah six and two. I've likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and de delicate woman. So that's the woman that Yahweh Shai is marrying unto, starting with the elect. Okay, twelve thousand from each of the tribes, and then one third of the nation of Israel in total. The remnant outside of that. Okay, so this is Revelation nineteen and seven. Let's be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, the, the wedding garment, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. That's what the garment is. It's the righteousness of the saints. It's, the, the, it's not literal white garments like the GOCC believes. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage of the supper of the Lamb. And saith unto him, these are the true sayings of Yahweh. So that's it, man. If you if you if you be blessed soul to make it, Lord willing, that's where I want to be at, man. And that's where every brother should want to be at. Okay. So with that, man, I pray you edify, inshallah.